Yeah. Um, so what is, before this goes out, good timing there. <laughs> so this, yeah, just an introduction to this course really. So uh, this is kind of subsidised, um, I am funded directly by Talisman, which is um, a project sponsored by the National Centre for Research Methods. The National Centre for Research Methods is what the ESRC um, is investing in. They have identified a need for researchers when they're developing new methods, not just to do it in one institution amongst a small group of researchers, but to actually disseminate that information to a, a wider group of people. So um, this talk is going to be part of that process. There's a range of um, courses available, this is just one of them, but we found that our courses at the moment are, be, are extremely popular, um, and that's why this is a rerun um, of a previous R course. Um, so, that's, I'll be talking a bit about that later. So in terms of the course agenda, I've talked about fire exits, which is there and through the back, um, but in terms of the agenda, so you can basically split it into two halves. The first half is before lunch and we're going to be talking about the real foundation of spatial data in R. How do you actually read it in? What does spatial look data look like and how can you interrogate it? Ask basic, very basic important questions that you're going to be using all the time in your own analysis in R. Um, and that kind of comes under here. And then we're going to talk about manipulating spatial objects. So how can you take a subset? If you've got a massive area loaded, how can you just take uh, the points within a certain bounding box or something? You're going to learn that um, in the kind of second half of this, hopefully before lunch. should point out at this stage that everyone works at different rates. So um, we can be quite flexible. And I would emphasize working through it and ensuring you've got understanding rather than trying to finish the document. So in your packs, you'll have this um, booklet, which is um, the, it's actually quite been quite updated since last time we did it based on feedback from people, but there are some typos in there, but just kind of gloss over those. Or um, Also, as I've said, we're making this open to the, to the research community, so if you've got any feedback, even just from little typos to more fundamental stuff about uh, maybe you could have said more about this thing, maybe something wasn't useful, please do let us know, and that's why we've got our emails up there, so feedback's very much appreciated. Um, but anyway, lunch is going to be at 12.30, uh, roughly, so I'll, we can take a, a break from then. Um, and then we move on to more of the kind of visualisation stage. How can you make graphics look really beautiful in art? Um, and so we're going to be talking about the base maps, um, which is where you have like a layer taken from Google or OpenStreetMaps, and you can plot your data over the top of that, which is really useful. And then talk about some more advanced visuals, including um, creating a faceted map, which is something that's very difficult to do in more conventional GIS software like ArcGIS. So that's a kind of overview, and then I'm going, I'm going to make a point at about 4 o'clock we're going to take a break because one of the feedback we've had is that, okay, you're talking about things in general terms, but people come here with ideas about how they want to use R for their own research. So we're going to take a break and actually have a bit of a question and answer session about what do you want R to do for you, and maybe ways that you can tailor this tutorial uh, towards that. So, moving on, a bit about R, it's a pretty strange um, name for a, a, langu a language, I've already heard two jokes involving pirates about R this morning, but um, the reason it's called R is two of the developers of it, their first name begins with R, and it's a play on name because it's developed from a proprietary um, statistical programming language called S. Um, it is developed by statisticians, so the help, it's got a reputation of being quite daunting to understand. The help documentation is very terse, so this is exactly the reason why courses like this can be useful for people. Um, I think it's the de facto standard for advanced statistical analysis, so if a statistician is developing new methods um, of analysing data, a lot of the time now, your, the first computer program that will be able to do that analysis is written in R. So it's really a good interface between computer programming and 
um, new methods, and this is really coming through in the spatial data analysis, which is why I think there's a lot of excitement around R at the moment. It's a programming language, so that's why people find it daunting as well. You can, it's not as general purpose as something like Python, and it's specifically geared towards data analysis. It likes handling data. Um, but the fact that it's a programming language gives it a huge amount of flexibility to create add-on add -on packages for it. You can do stuff like animations on it, and you can even build uh, web interactive web interfaces uh, using R. So that flexibility can pa uh, play dividends. And of course, it's being used by an increasing number of organisations. So high performance, it's got an extremely good support network. People often say with open source software, oh, but how, how can you get support if you're not paying for it? Well, actually, the support network for R now, because so many people use it, if you put a question out on Stack Exchange, for example, about R, you're likely to get a reply within an hour or two from possibly a world expert in R. So it's got a really strong community, and there's a lot of information, there's a lot of tutorials now, such as the one that you'll be working through that are actually available online. Uh, reproducibility. Um, R helps make your research reproducible. So if you do a certain type of analysis in a graphical user interface, you have to remember the series of steps that you took. With R, because it's all scripted, you can save that script file and be able to run it again, pass it to a colleague that you're working alongside, and if it's a really good piece of code, you, I think you've got a better chance of getting reference for it as well. Kind of talks about versatility. It's a unified solution to a large amount of problems. So I like the fact that you can do your non-spatial analysis um, in R, and then you can plot the results spatially using R as well. And then finally, ethics. I think there's a good, a strong ethical argument for open source software. So there are some people have economic barriers to accessing um, accessing the computing that they need to do quantitative analysis. But we want to make quantitative analysis available to everyone worldwide, developing countries, rich countries, you know, rich and poor. Often it's hard to get the licenses for certain pieces of software, say SPSS the latest version of Excel, R is always going to be free because it's open source. So there's a real strong ethical element to using R, I think. Um, so that's why R in general, but why would you possibly want to use this software for GIS? Um, these, this is, I'm going to skip over these. Basically, these graphs just show um, the growth rates in R. So it is kind of becoming more and more popular. Not very clear graphics on there, but if you go onto the HTML page, you'll see that. Um, and also it's becoming increasingly recognised in the employment market, so if you're teaching um, undergraduates, R is something that they will want to be able to put on their CV, um, because yeah, it's increasingly asked for by companies.